Hey, and welcome to Tim Talks. Now, this movie is about something completely different for a change because I don't really have any more tech to review. Well, I'm saving up to get a more tech to review. I'm actually considering branding out to something else, but... Anyway, today is going to be a color grading tutorial, so... Intro! One of the really cool things about making these YouTube videos is that you, the audience, gets to respond. And quite a few have actually been asking me about how I do my color grading. I'm not really an expert in color grading. I know how to do it, but I haven't really done it that much that I can call myself an expert about it. I have learned some tricks of the trade and some cheat ways of getting to my result. The look that I have achieved with these review videos has apparently kind of gotten some attention from you guys and you would like to know how and I'm gonna show you how. Before we go in there, I usually shoot in S-Log3 and I recently just started thinking that might be wrong. I might need to start shooting in S-Log2 instead because the S-Log3 is really, 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 really blind. The S-Log2 is also really blind, but not really, 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 really blind. Bland, bland, bland. Sorry, I'm not. English is not my first language. I'm still shooting in S-Log3 on this one, but I would actually quite like to see how this would change things. Two seconds. Now this is S-Log2 with the complete same settings. Is there a lot of difference here? Well, I guess I'll figure out whenever I edit. So just for continuity, I'm gonna go back to the S-Log3. Two seconds. Another thing is that I am shooting on the Sony A7S Mark II and as a lot of YouTubers already know, the Sony does not really deliver the best skin tones compared to, for example, the Panasonic or the Canons. The color space for Canon is really, really good. So what I have been trying to do is that I have been trying to switch in between the color modes. I've just started using the S Gamut nothing instead of the S Gamut 3 sign because the S Gamut 3 sign is lacking in color so much that I feel I can't really push it back into the picture with saturation and I'm just trying my way forward here so I'm just using the S gamut instead because that's a smaller color space and hopefully it won't take as much of noodling around with stuff to get color back into it. The other thing is that I use lots. That is the way I cheat to make the look happen. I use normal color grading techniques to get the picture to wear I think that now it's pretty good and then I use slots to create a look because I'm one of those guys who like an interesting look that kind of, it should match whatever you're doing. The normal, just normal stuff, I think that's pretty boring. But you'll see that, you'll see that in the movie. So, without any further ado, let's jump onto the computer screen. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna go down and open up our Final Cut Pro. And then I have already loaded in a video segment of me doing a review that I did the other day. So I'm gonna find somewhere down on the line where I look spectacularly stupid, which will be right here. The way I'm gonna do this is that I'm gonna make a kind of a normal color grading, but still cheating a little. I've recorded this in S-Log3, what is called S-Gamut Sign profile, which is very, very colorless, which means that I can still try to put in some color, but it won't be as warm as I would like it to be. So what I am going to do is that I'm going to go up to the top middle here, and I am going to press that and go down to show video scopes. What I'm also going to do is that I'm going to turn off the left side over here. You can do that up in the right corner over here. And uh, right now it's uh, set to uh, the color corrections. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the top part which says view and I'm not gonna press it, I'm gonna go directly under it to where it looks like there's a little graph here. Press that, go down to Luma. And then you see what is called a Luma scope coming out, which means that there is a lot of noise here in the middle. And then if you go out to the left side, you can see a zero over here and you can see a hundred. Because I have recorded in S-Log3, most of the exposure is in the middle, which also makes the picture very, very bland. I am going to turn on the left side again, and I'm going to go over to the left side and go over to where I have the text option. Right here, I have downloaded an adjustment layer. 
you can go on Google yourself and find an adjustment layer. I found one that I can remember from when I got it, but I'm gonna drag it this onto down above my film clip. Just gonna make it a little bigger. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna edit on the adjustment layer instead of directly on the clip because that's the way I like to do it. If you like to do it the other way, please just do it the other way. And then I'm gonna go over here to where I have my filters menu. The filters menu can be turned on up here in the middle right side. You can see right here there is some icons where the cursor is uh, hovering right now. And the second from last one is the effects panel. You can press that, it will turn it off, and you can press that, it will turn it on again. And I am already on color, so you need to go up and find color and find the thing called color correction and drag that one onto the layer. I'm gonna go back. Your menu up here should look like that. Now, if you don't have the menu over here right now, you can again go up to the top right side and press this one, which looks like you have some small editing tool. You can turn it on again and you, sh you should see that. Also, you should be in the middle over here by the T and the film strip and the I. You should be in the middle, not on the T or on the I, but on the film strip. And then press the arrow and that will open up the cause region. You should also go directly to exposure. Let me just turn this off again. I need to get the bottom part here very close to zero and I need to get the top part ideally up to 100 now. I can see on my picture that this is actually very overexposed, which means that I have a lot of light coming in from the side here. So I probably won't need to get it up here, but ideally if you have exposed correctly, you should be go just under 100. I'm gonna go over here and press the shadows button and hold it down and start moving down. And as you can see on the, on the other side, you should be able to see that the noise thing is kind of moving. And I'm gonna just take it down to just around zero. You can see here, it's just around zero, the low point here. And I'm gonna go over and take the highlights and go just up a little, not a whole lot, just a little, because you can already see I'm pretty overexposed here. Now this is it for now, so I'm gonna go up to view again and hide video scopes because then it makes it bigger. The thing I do is that I use Color Finale as a LUT plugin, and I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna take this and drag it over onto my adjustment layer, and then I'm gonna go out again, and you can see now that the Color Finale is right here. I'm gonna say Open Controls. What I usually do is that because I actually still think that this is a little too bland, so I go press Curves, which is up here, and then I make a little S, just a little bit, and I go down and take the bottom part, and just pull it up a little bit, so it doesn't become completely black. Now I might go in and take that down again, but for now I'm not. As you can see, that already kind of make the picture look a little different. You can see if I'm turning it off, and turning it on, I already kind of made a look for my picture now, but that's not enough, I'm gonna go in and press LUT square, that's a little square up here, and uh, it opens up the LUT utility. Now, if you know nothing about LUTs, please go watch a film about how to import LUTs into Final Cuts and how to use them. But what I'm gonna do is that I got myself some movie LUTs, because it's a lock file, I'm gonna go, go down to lock, and then on the lock I now have a lot of different lots that I can use. Now, I really like this one called Captain America Civil War. I'm gonna press that, and when I press apply, let's just see what happens. Oh, that did a whole lot. Now, this lot has the kind of classic orangey, orangey mid-tones and highs, and kind of blue-green lows, which means that in the foreground is gonna be a little orange. I actually quite do like this look already, but you can do more to it if you want to. So I'm gonna go into my color wheels over here. One thing you should know about Color Finale is that it's it's quite a powerful little thing, so you just move things slightly just to see how that looks. And then you can go back and turn it off again just to see. But I like that I just that I just brought a little more skin tones into it and also try to see the background if that got into our snow. That is pretty good. And just to go down, just to see down over here at the highlights, minus 
0.01 and 0.02 and 0.03. It's, it's that little that you actually have to move it. Just to be sure, let's just try and adding a little more in the mid-tones. Just a little bit. No, that's too much. I can go up to these circ round circles here and press that, and that will make the cursor jump back to default. Let's just go to the shadows down here and see, just press out, just make it a little more green. Oh, that's too much, that's too much. That is okay. That looks pretty good. Let's just turn it off and see. That's what it looked like only with the lot on. And this is my small color corrections. Now I like this because it made the skin tones pop out a little more. Just to finish this off, I'm just gonna go back to curves and then I am gonna go down and just try to bring the blacks in again. Oh, it was a little too much. Bring the, bring the blacks in again. No, I liked it up here. So this is what I am gonna do. This needs to render out before you can see it, but let's just make a little video in the end so you can see Ooh, the difference. The sound. Now the sound is the important thing. I might just say in the beginning that the bass there could be more bass. It's not that the bass is not there, it's just compared to more expensive brands. So this is my way of cheating a little with the color grading. Now, I actually do think that I got it pretty good. If I made a whole movie or something for a company, I would not do this. I would actually go in and do more of a traditional color grading, which you can find a lot of movies about. But this is a easy little way to cheat with it. And let's just jump back to me on the couch. And we are back to me on the couch again. So that was really, really fun making that video. I'm still gonna start doing more tutorials because like I said in the beginning, I have been learning some tricks of the trade that I can give on to you guys if you wanna learn stuff or if you're thinking that. Because often whenever I'm searching around YouTube to find some tutorials about, there's a lot of tutorials, but often it's people wanna tell me all about how I should import it and export it and I know that already. I know how to do it so I get the best result. I just want you to tell me how to do the in-between part. And I'm gonna try to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial because this was very, very fun to do. And uh, I hope you can use it that, or you can take whatever I did and take it over to your own thing and do something you want because it's all about just seeing how the mechanics works. And then of course you can do whatever you wanna do. If you like what I do, Please subscribe to my channel. Please like this movie. Just smash that like button down there. Smash them, smash them all over the place. Stay creative and have a very, very nice week. When I saw this pair, I thought I might get this because they might sound pretty good. And also they seem to look really good. I've been wearing them for about a month now 